All right, everyone, welcome. It's Chris Petrie here again, and we're having a fantastic time painting this wonderful still life. Um, I wanted to just show you this painting first before we start and kind of just explain a little bit of what we're going to do before we get into it. Um, so basically, we uh, I set up in my studio very simply on a piece of white foam board um, in the front here and in the behind this uh, still life setup. I have a fresh tomato. Um, I had a um, styrofoam uh, lemon and a bottle of wine. So I have all these things in my studio. I leave them here. I use them all the time to practice my still life uh, uh, compositions, which build my skills on colors, shadows, um, tonal values, um, my drawing skills. So you're going to do the same thing back in your studio or in your kitchen or your living room, wherever you're working on your coffee table, stack tray, um, you know, whatever kind of setup you have, sketchbook, maybe you just have a sketchbook you use all the time or a pad of paper and you have that in your lap, fine. However you paint, it's wonderful. Uh, we all paint differently, right? As artists, we kind of do things differently, all of us. I show you what I do and I'm hof hopefully you'll d find your own uh, take on things as we go. But I just wanted to show you what we do here, and I was getting more into making people happier on my channel because a lot of people always say, "Chris, I, I need to see the picture. I, I don't see the picture on you know, uh, and it's hard for me to paint." So I'm trying to do more of this where I have where I can when I can. I'm going to try to st start doing more of this where I have some of the photographs right here on my phone. I took a photo of the still life setup I had here in my studio that I worked from. And I actually worked from my phone. Once I took the picture, then I just used my phone and worked right here and we did this painting. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to sketch it out first with pencil. I'll explain how we kind of draw this scene and how we kind of place everything just like you see here. We got it pretty close and I'll show you exactly how you're going to do that so that you don't wind up having things kind of scattered around your painting but all grouped together like it is here. And then I'll also explain how we're going to paint this and all the different colors we're going to use. We're going to mix everything out on our palette before we even start and match it up to our photograph. So we, we're we going to do a lot of interesting things that are going to help you to get a beautiful painting and composition like this done. A nice beautiful still life and still lifes are great because you can set them up anytime with anything. Just things around the house, cups, saucers, um, fruit, vegetables, wine bottles, wine glasses, um, anything you can think of around the house you can set up and do a, a simple composition like this so just wanted to mention that we're um, um, gonna cover all the details that you need to get this painting done and I also mentioned too if it's your first time ever here and you've never been to my channel before on YouTube welcome I'm so excited you're here uh, get excited this is watercolor at its basics you learn the basic methods and techniques of watercolor right here on my channel every week, week after week, month after month, year after year. And if you stick with us for at least a year or two, you'll be doing paintings like this with ease, with no problem, because you're going to have the, all the basics, uh, skills and techniques that you need uh, under your belt, because you're going to be painting with us every week on our YouTube channel here. So you won't have any problem. You'll be practicing all the time. Okay. All right. So we're going to get started in just a second. And I thank you for your patience. Okay, so we just saw the finished painting, and now we're going to start with our pencil drawing, and let's get started. I'm going to use a uh, 6B, uh, which is a little bit of a darker um, lead, so this way we can see it a little better on camera. And of course, I, I'm going to use my, uh, my phone here on the uh, right side. That's going to be my reference photo to draw this painting, and it's going to be a beautiful still life painting. We're going to have fun, no pressure. If it doesn't come out good, we'll take our painting, we'll flip the paper over, and we'll start another one. And we'll do the same thing over, and maybe after a while, after two or three times, we're going to see improvements on each of the parts of the, maybe the first time the bottle's going to come out good, but maybe the lemon or the tomato might not come out good. Then the second time, maybe the cup comes out good, the bottle doesn't come out as great. You can even practice each of these items uh, first. Try the bottle first separate, try the uh, cappuccino cup separate next, or maybe the cappuccino cup and the tomato, 
as a separate painting, a little small composition, and then you go over and you work on your uh, lemon. Try that lemon, and then uh, once you try each uh, part of the composition, and the wine bottle, of course, too, then you can actually put them all together in the one composition. So you would use each one of these smaller sections or smaller parts of the painting, the composition. You, you draw and paint those parts first, once maybe. So again, you might paint, uh, and this is if you don't want to take on the challenge of doing the whole thing at one time. When I uh, first five years of watercolor painting, when I was going professional and said, I'm going to do it, I'm going to go for the gusto and, uh, you know, put all my time, all my time into watercolor painting and being a professional watercolor artist. What I noticed after I started practicing a lot and painting a lot was that I was way better off practicing single or a few parts to something first. And then once I did it a few times, I got the feel for it. Then I moved on to the next thing. And then I would try another part of a whole. So if I was trying to paint like a, a full painting of someone else's painting or a picture, whatever it is, if I practiced on each part first, got the feel for that, and then when I did the whole composition all together in one um, painting, it would go so much easier because I already had like the knowledge and the practice run on each of the parts, if that makes sense. You, you're the artist, you'll kind of think about that and um, maybe that's going to work for you it did work for me it's I would still do that too as well there's sometimes when I would like to paint something and there's a lot of information and I try to sketch out and paint smaller sections of a fuller composition first and then go from there so I think it's a good idea for he, for this for me I've painted these type of still life paintings many many times so I feel confident I can just go in here and pretty much render this and I'm going to do it in a fun way I'm not going to get bogged down with all kinds of details and sweating over everything. I'm just going to have a good time, enjoy it. And I'm always thinking as I'm drawing, this is another great thing. You'll have, you'll have fun with this and you'll realize it's true. Realize when you're drawing your painting that you're going to have so much fun painting it. So even though the drawing can be a little boring sometimes, or, or maybe the drawing can be a little bit, you know, that's, you know, sometimes a little difficult, whatever, but just realize you're going to be painting over the top of that drawing anyway, and you'll be able to make a little couple modifications he here and there to it. So, and always remember, too, your drawings aren't always going to look that great. Um, they, for some reason, pencil drawings look a little funny. But once you get in there and start painting, it all comes together and it comes to life and it looks so much better. So whenever you think your pencil drawings are looking a little funny, just keep working through the pencil drawing and don't worry about it. The worst thing is to keep erasing and erasing and erasing and erasing pencil lines and just give it a go. If the bottle comes out too big, too small, or the lemon's too big, too small, whatever it is, just go for it. Let it look a little funny. It's all about practice. You just keep practicing, and you're going to get better each time you go in and do a painting and a composition like this. So let's get started. First thing I want to do is I'm going to start with my, um, maybe I'll start with my tomato. And, I'm gonna, and I took a picture of this in the studio here. So I'm just going to start out with the tomato. And right away I notice, wow, there's a shadow there on the tomato. So I'm going to do that shadow like that. And then over here I notice the tomato comes back around here. And there's a little bit of light there. And there's another bit of light here. So I just put a little note on my tomato that there are a little couple little circles, knowing that I'm going to leave a little bit of white paper there. And then on top of the tomato there's some stems so I just did that a few stems then once I have that completed I'm gonna work over to my bottle my wine bottle here and I see that it's a little bit above that shadow and it starts there and I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna go across I'm gonna say to myself I'm thinking out loud right now. I'm talking out loud, even though this is what I'm thinking in my mind. I might not, when I'm at home working by myself, I wouldn't talk like this, obviously. <laughs> so I'm just talking out loud here. I'm going across here at the bottom of the wine bottle and saying, oh, wow, how far over is the bottom of that wine bottle over to the lemon? And then I kind of look at the painting and I say, well, it's not quite as wide as the tomato, but it's about maybe three quarters of the way in distance. So it's about 
from the light spot on the tomato over to the edge of the tomato, that's about how much, if we were gauging it and saying how, how far is that over. So then I just kind of do that and say, okay, here's the light. And if we want to, we can always just take a little scale and say, okay, here's the tip of my pencil where the light is, which is that light spot there on the tomato. I put my lead of my pencil there and then I put my, my fingers right where the edge of the tomato is on my drawing here like that. And I come over here and I look and say, yeah, that's about right. That's where the lemon starts. So I'll come over and do the bottom of the wine bottle, but I'm not going to do the wine bottle right now. I'm going to start the lemon. And I notice that the lemon is going this way. And it goes up like this, comes out like that. And then it goes around like so. And there's a little light spot on the lemon there too, so I'll put that bit of pencil mark there just to remember I need to leave that white paper for that really bright spot of light. And this also has a shadow. The lemon has a cast shadow going this way, like so. Okay, so now we have our lemon completed, and then I say how far over is the wine bottle, and it's not too far over on the top of the lemon going across here. So you can kind of see how the lemon is over here. The wine bottle isn't like halfway across the lemon. That would make the wine bottle absolutely too large and big and wide. So we're just looking and noticing, oh, the wine bottle starts up here on its vertical line very, very quickly once it passes this edge of the lemon. So once I pass this edge of the lemon, very, very shortly thereafter, that's where the wine bottle starts. It's a vertical um, line. And then I come up here, and then as I'm going up, I say, well, how far is that label? Here's my lemon. How far up is that bottom of that label compared to my lemon? And I say, well, it's about the thickness of that lemon, approximately. So I can even make a little note and say, okay, pencil, uh, how wide is this lemon? Well, we have the lemon correct here on our drawing, so we can use that and say, let's put our hands there and say, okay, that's the height of the lemon. If we go with the height of the lemon up here and put our, and we put a line there, then we know, okay, that's where we can put our label, the bottom of the label. And then we go across like this. Now, as we're going across this way, we notice where is this side of, where is the left side of the wine bottle? Well, it's just a little past that edge of the tomato. So that gives us another clue where our wine bottle edge is, and it's here. And it goes, and it also goes up a little bit too, and it tapers out this way. So the wine bottle kind of goes up very slightly on a taper this way, so it gets a little bit wider as it goes in vertical. So then now we're going to go up like this and we have our label like so. And I'm looking at the label and I'm saying how high is that label. If I look at my tomato, it's about it's about the same height as the tomato or a little bigger. So I say there label is right there. And I do my label there, and I meet up there, and as soon as I am at the top of the label, just a short distance after that, the bottle starts to taper up on a smooth curve like that. And this one here, I'm just going to remember that I'm going to start my curve about the same height, so if I look at my curve and it starts here. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Like that. And then now it's a little more easier now. We're just going up to the top. And then we can do the top of the wine bottle like that. And then there is a um, kind of a bit of a um, 
label on the top of this wine bottle here. So I think that looks good. And then we're going to, once we have our wine bottle complete like we have here, um, we're not going to worry about the writing on the labels so much. We could kind of just do a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, tiny little bit of markings just to give us a little idea of what we want to do there. And I can see that I went off a little bit here off track. Let me, let me do this. That looks a little better. And again, it's not perfect. We're not looking for perfection here. Um, okay, so now we have one thing left, or a few things. Let's say um, our edge of our, the back of our table is here. We definitely want to get that into our painting. And we go straight through the bottle like that, and we go across this way. Now that we've done that, we can erase a little over here like this, because we're going to do our uh, cappuccino cup. And it goes up a little bit beyond the top of this edge of the table. So we're going to come over and we're going to do our cappuccino cup. And let's see where that is. Okay, the cappuccino cup actually is halfway. Halfway up. Halfway midway. So the center of the tomato is where the cappuccino edge of the cappuccino cup starts there. And then it goes across, and it's about as wide as the tomato, maybe not as wide, about about as wide as the tomato, like that. An oval. So we just did an oval. If you want to practice some ovals, you can do that. You can just take a scrap piece of paper, like printer paper, and you just practice ovals. You make them wider, thinner, like this. So you can pretend you're drawing cups, saucers, bowls, whatever. You can do a fun exercise. I used to do this all the time. You start off in the center, like this, with a circle. And then as you go with your circle, you try to start to make ovals, like this, thinner and thinner. Like that. And then you do the same thing over here. You can do some ovals, and you try to practice making the ovals thinner and thinner. Like that. You can do it that way too. Circle, a little bit less of a circle, more of an oval. And you keep doing your ovals out like that. And that kind of gives you the feeling of that's a circle if you were looking straight down on a cup or a coffee cup. And then as if you're looking on the coffee cup and then you start to turn the coffee cup up and you start to see that oval. Is that Does that make sense? And then you can kind of see how you just keep practicing those ovals until they become um, just the coffee cup in two dimensions like that. So this would be the coffee cup or uh, cappuccino cup looking straight down at it like that if you were looking at it and the coffee's in here like that. And then as you draw that coffee cup like that and you, you can keep drawing it and then you start to have the until finally over here this is the top just like that. And you can do it this way too. Again you can do that exercise this way doing your oval exercises and you can practice circles. These are um, done with a stencil and then you can practice doing them freehand like that. Those are good because oval, ovals are difficult. They always are. And uh, let's see what we're going to do with the handle of the cup like that. And then we're going to do the uh, saucer that comes around like this and goes this way like so. And then we see the edge of the saucer like this and it also has a smaller bottom part like that. And there's a little bit of a shadow under there. And there's another shadow there where the bottom of the saucer is and then it, it tapers up like this. So I just captured that. And again, we're going to paint this, and when you draw it, it might look a little funny. If you always want to, you can always lift up a little bit of pencil lines with an eraser. 
if the drawing starts to look, look a little funny looking, that's all right. You're going to paint it anyway. So you could take a couple swipes with your eraser on your drawing to soften it up and make it look a little looser and not as uh, harsh. Okay, we've got it. Look at this. We've got a beautiful pencil drawing, still life drawing, wine bottle, tomato, lemon, cappuccino cup. Let's do one more um, thing here. We have the light going across the top of the cappuccino cup like that. It's very noticeable. So I just added that oval in here so that we could add that darker dark in there and then have that light around the top of the cup, the uh, cappuccino cup. And then again, you can erase a little bit just to soften it up a little bit. You're going to paint it, so that's the main thing. All right, I'm going to take a break right now. I want you to do the same thing. You've been doing a lot of work here. So let's take a break, and then what we can do is I'll also make a, a border around this. Like that. And there we have a nice pencil line border around our painting. It makes it look much more finished and gives us a good defined area we're working within in our composition. So we're going to come back and uh, before we do that, let me just do a few more things. I see there is a shadow under here like so. I just want to make sure I capture that. Okay, there's a shadow there a little bit, but not too much. There's one under this tomato. There's one under the lemon. I'm just kind of making sure my shadows, I have those correct. And then the rest, I'm going to paint from the picture, the photograph here of this still life. So we'll get started with our paints. Um, I think we're going to do this one. Um, a la prima. So we're just going to go in and start painting it straight and we're not going to really do any glazing on this one. We're just going to go right in and start painting the subject matter of our still life. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we've worked hard. We got our pencil drawing done. Now let's get in. We'll do our painting portion. We're just going to look at our wine bottle, our tomato, lemon, and cappuccino cup and we're going to say what colors can we mix ahead of time so that when we're in here painting our painting, we're not going to be having a difficult time uh, making decisions on our color. So that's the, the key here is let's let's kind of work out our colors. Once you have your colors worked out and you have them in your palette, then you can add more to it. So if you see you're running low on one color, you'll go, oh, I'm running low on this color over here. I know what color that is. And you just go back in and you get it and add a little more. So you basically, the only thing you have to worry about is just um, uh, matching up the color and saying, oh, that was uh, cadmium orange or cadmium red that was over here. Now I can just take a little more and add it in there. So that's how we'll, we'll work with the thought of let's get our colors out first. So let's start at the bottom of our palette first and let's put the colors close to the location in the palette as they are here in our, actually in our grouping of colors that we have. So the first is going to be the red. Let's try that. So let's make it interesting. Let's get some of this, which looks like alizarin crimson, if you're working with a regular uh, palette that I normally use. Let's say for just more of the advanced painting lessons I do. This is an extreme beginner's um, video, more or less, because we're using our, um, our beginner's palette, our beginner's brushes, my Simply Simmons Num uh, six size, number six size, Simply Simmons round watercolor brush. It's synthetic. Great for beginners. Um, so we're going to work out our tomato colors. Then we're going to use some cadmium red here. And you'll never go wrong if you're mixing colors of the same hue. So you could get lots of variation. You could add this red, which looks pretty much like an alizarin crimson. This red looks pretty much like a cadmium red for the most part, and then cadmium orange. So you add all these three over here in this first palette, and you have lots of variation of color, even though it's all in that same family of reds and oranges. That'll really give you lots of interesting color for your tomato. And then you are going to have some shadow on your tomato, so we're going to have to add some blue. So then we're going to work up here and get some blue and purple here, just so we have some blue and purple for some shadowing. We might need that. 
Okay, so now we're thinking ahead again. Now uh, let's work over to the lemon. The lemon is going to be, this here is pretty much a lemony yellow, a cadmium lemon, a cadmium yellow lemon, as they call it. That's the Windsor and Newton color and the uh, Holbein color, I think. Both of them have the same name. And you can also see there's maybe some darker uh, yellow. So we'll put a little bit of brown there so that we can mix um, a little bit of a yellowy uh, ochre color. So you can kind of make a raw sienna or yellow ochre color, even a raw umber. You could start to get into a raw umber over here, adding some of that So you can kind of mix out your colors like that. Give yourself a really good variation of yellows and golds, moving in toward the brown colors. Even some blue. We can go back in here and get some blue if we need to. And then let's move over to our um, wine bottle. That's going to be, um, let's just do more oh, cadmium lemon yellow. I see a lot of lemon yellow in that. I see a lot of green. So let's get that green out there, or that light green that's almost like a leaf leaf green if you're looking at colors, either Windsor or Newton or um, well, I know I think it's Holbein makes leaf green, I believe. I have a leaf green in my, my um, <clears throat> two paints uh, collection. And this is more like your sap green up here, almost like, uh, yeah, sap green pretty much. And then we can even go into some Viridian green over here, which is like a cooler green yet, like that. So now you have lots of variation for the wine bottle, your lemon, lemony yellow, some kind of like, um, we could add a little brown to our green to make it like an olive green. So if you want to make an olive green, you can take this green and add some brown to it. And that gives you like an olive green. And then we have, again, our other two greens up here, more or less our similar sap green color and then our Viridian style color. So plenty of green for the bottle. And, of course, the bottle, too, has some um, blue and some purple at the top and maybe some brown to gray it down a little bit for our blues. All right, we have all our colors mixed. Now all we have to do is keep focused and keep with a nice rhythm um, and just go in and start saying, okay, where are we going to start? And we'll go just keep working from there. I, I would like to start pretty much with my um, tomato. And from my tomato, I'll probably work over into the bottom of the bottle and over into the lemon. Back up like the same way we did the drawing, basically. I think we'll do it the same uh We'll work the same way we did the pencil drawing, the same with our colors and painting. We'll start with the tomato, bottom of the wine bottle, over to the lemon, our shadows. Get up, we'll do all, get, we'll get up into our wine bottle to finish that up and then come down and we'll finish up with our cappuccino. And, uh, and we'll do a little bit of color along the border of the backdrop and the table. And that's going to be it. It's going to be a fun process here. Let's. Before we start, let's take a break. It's always good, even when you think about it, mixing these colors and looking back and forth and back and forth and matching the colors. And this took us about six, seven, eight minutes. For you, if you're an extreme beginner, you're just starting out maybe your first couple months or whatever, it's gonna take you maybe half an hour to get all your colors out maybe and match them all. I'm just saying it might take a little longer. And then, but maybe not, you're the artist, you're gonna, see how quickly you're going to move and time yourself maybe. But after you've mixed all your colors out on your palette, that's going to be where your concentration level is going to be sort of like getting there, like, hmm, that would be the perfect time to take a break. And then after 10 or 15 minutes break, you come back, then you're ready to paint. Because if you do all this mixing of all your colors and you match all, and all of a sudden you just start going right in, right in and start painting, I'm telling you, it'll be more difficult because you're already <laughs> kind of stretched with your concentration level and then you're trying to go in and paint and that's not easy either doing the painting portion is a little challenging it's got its own challenges right so um, I'm gonna take a break I hope you will too and then we'll come back and we'll start our painting and we'll be more refreshed and have a little more fun if we're just relaxed a little more and, and rested okay all right I'll be right back 
All right, we're getting uh, back here and starting our painting. So what I'm going to do right now is um, it looks like I've waited about 15 minutes. So I've took take you know I've uh, took a break for 15 minutes here, and I can still see that my paints look pretty good. They're still activated and moist. I can still work with this, and I have a damp brush, and I keep rinsing that over here on my right with my water pail, and then I also have a tissue I usually keep in my hand to dry off my brush if I need to dry off my brush a little. So let's start out with the tomato, and I'll go in with uh, some red to add some more red to this, and some more of that cadmium red too as well. And then I'll look and I'll say it's like this. We'll go in and get some red onto the paper here. We can go into that shadow area and uh, I'll get some orange here. Right away I'm going to grab some of that brown and gold for some shadow color and as well as some blue. that. And then I'm going to keep working my uh, tomato color. And then here there's a bit of light up there. I'm going to leave that light there. And then over here there's some more light. Maybe I'll leave a, a spot of light there. Then I look and I Notice that there, it's a little darker over here. Maybe I take some cadmium red, lizard and crimson, and I pick up a little bit of blue. And I just add a little bit of that darker bit there. That little bit of shadow, and it kind of goes under here like so. Then I rinse off my brush, dry off my brush on a paper towel or tissue so that it's not a, a really wet brush, but a very, very, very dry brush, just a little bit damp. And then I can just kind of smooth out that darker wash we just added there so that it doesn't look too much um, like a dark spot but more kind of blending in and this looks pretty good there and I think that looks fine for our tomato so our tomatoes already completed and that's excellent let's start moving right over into our bottle into the greens let's just get some greens over here like that and some golds like this and I'll actually work some of that green and gold right over into the tomato and then over here like that and there's some dark blues and purples on the bottom of this bottle here I can see it's kind of darker at the bottom <clears throat> and then uh, let's get our yellow for our lemon. And that is going to be straight lemon, cadmium lemon yellow, or just the lemony yellow. So I'm going to go straight in to that lemony yellow. I'm going to leave a white dot of light there, that beautiful light. And I'm going to start getting my lemon yellow on there. So I. I noticed it's pretty bright up top, so I'm going to leave that with a damp brush. So I'm using a damp brush. I dry off, rinse off the brush with clean water, pretty clear water. I have very, very clean water. I just changed it. Dry off the brush a little bit, and then you can do some light wash by just thinning out your paint on top of that lemon like so. Then we can go in over here and start working our lemon color this way which gets a little darker over here so then we remember we added some brown to our lemon yellow to get a little bit of a darker um, shadowy kind of color over here on the lemon you can we can also add some blue to that blue and purple color that looks good too over here it's kind of dark. It's got a bit of a shadow over here. Like this. 
Now, what we want to do is um, start getting our shadow in here underneath, like that, right in, like so, some blue, purplish color, like that. That looks pretty good. And so far that looks good. Let's get some more green and lemon like that. So now the wine bottle is a little more fun. We can get some red in there. The tomato maybe has a little bit of red influence on the, uh, the bottle because of the uh, shadow uh, reflection of the and we're doing the bottle and it's pretty much green so I'm not getting too fussy now you see I'm moving quick here because of the bottle is pretty large and we can just get our um, washes going in there and we'll get some shadow in there like that there's some shadowing on this side and you can see I'm moving right along here with the bottle because it's kind of pretty straightforward here with the bottle there's not there's a little bit of light on the top of the bottle so I'm gonna make sure I I leave a little bit of a spot of light up here like that And I just remember to keep mixing yellows, pretty much yellows and greens for the bottle. And a little bit of brown too, like mixing up the colors nicely. Like that. And some blues and purples too. So we have some blues and purples over here. Like that. Then there's some there, and then there's some darker spots there. And there's a darker spot there. So I'm just trying to get these darker passages up here too. Um, blue, purple, touch of brown. It's a little darker on this side. So I add a little more brown to that there on the right side. So you can kind of just get yourself a really nice dark for your right side over here. And you can see I've already smudged a little bit on my paper. And I like the smudges and things like that. That to me is classic watercolor struggling to try to keep things neat and it doesn't always work so and then we can always neaten up these we can neaten up some of these lines later so I rinse off my brush again dry off my brush on a tissue and then I get a lighter light here so you can kind of see I and then green and gold up here we're back to the glass of the, bo the bottle so it's a uh, darker green over here with maybe a little bit of the darker green up here like so and then that lighter green over here and There's a little bit of a darker bit there. So again, have fun, enjoy the colors, the mixes of colors. And then I just maybe tap a little bit of the color onto the, the label and then maybe 
put some color on the label, just a little bit, some gold, and I noticed the label's a little darker through this area here. Over on the right hand side of that label, you can kind of see the light is on the left side, and then the, there's a shadow along the center here for the label. So we'll just remember to kind of keep that label a little bit darker on the right side like that and then over on the left it's lighter all right wow we're really coming along here and again I'm gonna take another break I'm starting to uh, my concentration is getting a little bit um, weary I want to make sure I do a great job on my cappuccino cup here and um, so let me take a quick break. We're going to do our cappuccino cup next. A little more detail with the tomato with the stems. We'll do this backdrop here between the backdrop and the tabletop. And I think we're going to have a completed painting. So uh, let's come back in a second or two and we'll finish up and we'll have a fun time doing it. All right, we're back and we're getting started again. And we're actually finishing up our still life painting here of a beautiful wine bottle, tomato, lemon, and cappuccino cup. Real simple composition. When we talked about it in the very beginning of the video, how you can break these down into smaller exercises first, and then you put all the parts together as a whole a composition in this type of a painting like this. Um, so let's continue on here. Let's finish up. We'll work with our cappuccino cup here and see what we can... We're going to do some shadowing on that cup, and there's going to be... Um, purplish and then a little bit of that uh, kind of lemony color like that so I'm going and a little bit of red there's some red in there from the reflections it's a very very smooth um, cup with um, it's a smooth cup with a very very shiny sh surface so therefore, it's going to reflect the red of the tomato a little bit. So we're going to have that red reflection a little bit in there. And then there's some more, maybe some green over the here oh, on this side, maybe some of that green reflection of the bottle. So that cappuccino cup is picking up different colors. And it's going to have that white. Um, rim along the top and then we're going to rinse our brush off dry off our brush and just smooth out this area over here so that it kind of goes over to almost the all white paper then we have our handle our handle on our cappuccino cup is in shadow so there's a shadow on that and so we have that shadow there and it I forgot to leave a little bit of light on the top. What we can do is we can recapture that little bit of light on the top with some white paint later. So we'll remember to do that. Then we have some more um, shadow over here on the saucer. And there's some gold in there too. So we want to sort of give it a little um, pizzazz our color right we're going to do some purple in there and blue for the shadow of the saucer there but we add some gold and to some yellow we'll tap it in there a little bit of red even too just to give it some excitement and then over here there's again blue and purple so I'll mix up some more of that shadow color blue and purple and maybe some more brown up here so we can kind of keep ourselves with a good mix of colors and then there's a little bit of that darker color there I'm gonna lift up like that that might be good we'll come back later maybe and add some more shadow there but I think that should be good then there's the shadow under here like so that goes right under the tomato there's some gold uh, some orangey gold like that 
in that shadow that's underneath the saucer. So we don't want to... The cappuccino cup and saucer is really nice with a lot of detail to it. So we're going to really have an enjoyable time painting that. And that's what we're doing right now. And we notice that... Um, we'll try to get some of those details under there like that. There's some light under here. Some reflected light. And then there's that. A little bit of shadow over here. Like that. And then a couple splashes there. I'll pick up some orange, a couple splashes of orange. If you don't like the splash, how it came out, you can always just gently tap up like that. And if we would put a couple there, we want to add a few up in the top of our painting. And then again, you can always lighten up the ta uh, splashes if you want by just picking up a little bit of, uh, of the splashes. that you can make them less visible or and they're going to dry even lighter we always remember that watercolor always dries lighter than when you're putting it into your painting when it's first being applied to your paper so now we're putting the shadow inside the cup a little bit of orange too and then it gets very very light toward this side that and then it's darker here like that okay so our cappuccino cup is looking really good there's a little bit of a darker dark on this part of them like that so we can put that in and there is a decent shadow over here like that. So then I put that little bit of darker shadow right in there, reflection. Then I take my brush, dry it off, rinse it off, dry it off on a tissue, and then I just smooth it out just a little bit so it smooths out into the other washes next to it. Like that. And that just gives it that nice, um, uh, it gives it like um, volume or three dimensional feel because you know that you see the dark here and then the lights coming from over here and you see the light coming around that cappuccino cup like that so that's really important if you can kind of take your washes and smooth them out going from dark to light that really makes a huge difference with the way everything looks in the uh, final um, part of your painting process so we have everything pretty good for there we're gonna have to add some um, background color to where the where we have our table so I'm gonna not make a huge statement along this area here um, with this section just enough so that we know that this is the edge of the table and this is the backdrop here and I just kinda smooth out that color and I taper it down this way a little bit. And then I just try to introduce the same colors we've been working with. So I just want to make sure I... And some yellow. Chris, what are you doing? I'm recording. Hey everybody, just a quick informational. I'm really excited. I've been invited to the Thousand Island Arts Center to teach a uh, workshop this summer. It's uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's a daytime workshop, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have an absolutely fantastic time. 
I'm going to put up the itinerary in just a second too as well, but I wanted you to have the Thousand Island Arts Center phone number so you can call to register, or you can also register online. That's up to you. Uh, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Again, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Or you can also um, register and look up all the information online at TIA. R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Again, their website is T-I-A-R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Um, I th I'll put the itinerary up here so you can just, I'll scroll it. I'm not going to read it. I'll just kind of scroll it up so you can kind of see the class description. And you can look this up online too. I encourage everybody to look um, for the um, brochure. If you go to the website, you'll see a brochure button. You click on that brochure button, you'll see my course, as well as other courses if you can't happen to make these dates, but you still want to take a watercolor class or watercolor course and workshop. And uh, there's also an online course for watercolor artists. So if you're interested in doing online uh, watercolor courses they have those as well that's something he was really this is a great resource everyone for your for your watercolor art i know some of you mentioned that you wanted to um do wanted to inquire about online art and watercolor painting classes i um i'm not doing them right now i'm really looking forward to maybe in the future doing some online courses but right now i'm just not um not geared up for that right now so they have them though for those that want to do online courses but just a great resource and beautiful historic area beautiful scenery water and boats everywhere beautiful architecture shopping there's uh, museums so that's the itinerary and um, I hope you'll all make it out to the workshop and again we're gonna have a great time tons of fun drawing and painting and watercolor so I hope to see you there and um, let's get back to our watercolor painting Okay, we're picking back up again. We're actually excited here. We're going to be doing the last few brush strokes of our painting. Uh, now's the time to get excited when you, you, it's always a fun time when you're kind of finishing up your painting and you just know you have a couple la last minute things and you know they're going to go okay because there's nothing too crazy going on. So let's get right into it here and uh, let's uh, spritz our palette. I took about a couple hour break actually, so my palette colors dried up a little bit. Let me spritz the color, the wells, and my, there we go. So this way we just get everything back activated again, all the colors. And then I looked at this when I was, um, before I started just now, and I realized I want to fix a few things. So let me fix the things that I can recall right away because I'll, maybe I'll forget them. I don't know. One thing I noticed was I thought this could be a little better there. I think I I thought I could darken up the shadow area a little better over here because that was too red under there. I didn't have enough purple and blue. For that this shadow area so that's what I thought I could fix that up a little bit so that's all I had to do then I rinse off the brush dry off the brush a little bit on a tissue so that there's not any water a lot of water on it and then I can just kind of smooth that in with the rest of that like so
And again, as I fix some things up on here, I just want to mention, like, um, I wouldn't go too crazy with fixing too many things. Maybe pick four or five things or three or four things you think you might want to repair a little bit or get a little better that you might not have got exactly the way you want. But I wouldn't make this like a, an hour an, an hour of fixing all these different things because then it'll really you'll see that in the finished painting. Even though this is a composition, a fun composition. So all I did here was I thought this needed to be lighter under here where the um, the saucer is for this cappuccino cup so I dampened the paper there to lighten this section up and then all I got to do now is press on the uh, and I can also add some white paint we're going to use a white paint in a few minutes to do that lighten this up a little more I think that needs to be lightened up a little more um, what else did I see that I needed to do um, repair wise oh over here uh, for some reason, I thought this could be lightened up over here a little bit, maybe. Maybe a little yellow and green paint there. Sometimes if it's not exactly the way you see it in a picture, that you're working from or if you're actually setting up a bottle and, and some fruit and vegetables and cups and saucers whatever you want to set up it's always best if you can to set up your background with a white foam board or a white tablecloth and then a white background like a tablecloth in the background or here I have a white piece of um, uh, matte, matte paper or it looks like it might be yeah it looks like matte paper I have here in the studio I just have that bit of to take the picture and make everything look clear so you can see it on camera. I set this up in my studio right before we started this painting and took the picture. And um, so um, that can be a big help to um, not always follow exactly what you're seeing here. Just kind of use it as like once you start painting and having a fun time with your paints, go with that. Have an enjoyable time and always refer back to your photograph please do that but it doesn't have to be exact so you wouldn't want to be suffering over getting every dark bit of dark and every bit of highlights you know I only did a few highlights I, I did one here where that one is I tried to leave one over here a little bit for that one I'm gonna add some white paint up here so you'll see how I work through this Mentally, I'm just talking to myself basically or thinking out loud. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to move on to the next thing I think I should do um, to finish this painting. So I recognize that I need to f finish my shadowing on the background along this line here. So let's do that. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of random color, some red some orange, a little bit of green, and then just lightly, and then take a damp brush. I rinse the brush off in cr really clean, very cr crystal clear, clean water, because now we're at the end of the painting. We don't want to have muddy water in our bucket. And then we dry off the brush a little, and then we just sort of blend this in nice and softly so that it looks like a shadow where it gets darker and then lighter. So I do that. And I go right up to the cappuccino cup, like that. Then I say, let's get some cool. We've got all warm colors there, orange, reds. Let's get a little blue in there, too, like that. And then over here, let's do some more blue, like that. So again, I rinse off the brush in nice, clean, clear water. Dry off a little bit of that water off the brush and then soften that paint out like this up up higher above here. Like this. And it always looks great if you can do this. Um, 
you can add just a little bit of a zip of color along the top of that cup like that. Some warm and cool, orange and blue, purple. And then even maybe go for it, add a little bit of even something like that. Damp brush again with clear, clean water. And then you can even add a little more touch of blue. Thing like that. And that just gives you that little bit of tiny bit of dark wash there along the top of that light. Looks really good. And then another maybe and some maybe orange like that to get a little bit darker there. And what else can we do? Uh, oh, I know we have to do the uh, tomato, the stems of the tomato. This is going to be fun. Let's, uh, this has got a pretty good point on it. I might shift over to the stock brush that comes with the, um, this wonderful Prang Oval 16 set of paints. I always mention this. I, I hope everyone is going to pick yourself up Prang Oval 16 watercolors. You can find these online. You can find them in your art stores, local art stores and art supply shops. Um, very popular. These are You can find these readily available. And you can see how great we get beautiful color with these. And the paintings look just great with this type of paint. And you don't have to, you know spend a fortune on paints, especially if you're just beginning. If you're just starting out in watercolor, don't bother spending a ton of money on art supplies because you might not like it. You might paint for like two months and go, oh, I, I think I want to do sculpture. And that might be really cool. And you'll figure out that, uh, you know, you watch a few sculpture videos and figure out you want to work with clay and sculpture or ceramics or something else. But, you know, if you really are getting really excited about watercolor, phenomenally excited about watercolor, then, you you know, you'll eventually buy tube paint and get the more expensive paints. You know, they, they handle beautifully too, and but these work beautifully. And they, you can see, we can create beautiful paintings with these palettes. Praying over 16. And uh, so we are... I'm just adding a little touch more of color over here as I wanted to that and I did pick up my stock brush that comes with this kit so this Prang Oval 16 set comes with a really nice round brush with a really good sharp point like that so even when you buy this Prang set you get your brush you get your paints and then all you need to really do is get some paper and you're all set and you can even use printer paper to start out with. You don't have to start out with fancy watercolor paper in the beginning when you're just starting. You can do paintings just like this with using printer paper. And uh, so let's continue. Uh, let me add a little yellow over here too. I think it balances it a little better if I add some yellow like that. And I rinse off my brush and just blend that like that. Okay, so uh, two things. Let's do the stems here. We mentioned we were just going to do that. Now for the stems of the um, tomato, let's go with green. And now we're just going to use straight paint, no, no water. Brown. A little bit of that brown. Green. Maybe a little bit of red. A nice dark green, maybe a little bit of the lighter green in there too. That looks pretty good. So this is just really straight paint with a tiny bit of water. And then to do my stems, I'm going to do them really uh, very, very loosely and free. I'm not going to get, you'll see how we're going we're gonna to flick, flick the paint on the paper with this. So I dry off some of that green paint. We just loaded up the brush and we spin the brush around a little bit to get that nice point like that. So you see how we have a nice point. Then you dry off a little bit of the paint off the brush like that just so there's not too much on there. 
And then we're just going to go here and just do this and just do a couple flicks of our paint onto the paper like that. Once, twice there, over there once, like that. And then we're going to get our uh, needlepoint brush like this. If you don't have one of these, you just have to... Um, you can go to uh, Alvaro Cassignette. These are the best needlepoint brushes I've found out there. They come in three different sizes. I use the number eight mostly, but I have a number six and a number four. But I use the eight mostly 90% of the time when I am painting. And these are very affordable. And these really take your artwork to another level. Because if you can get really beautiful fine points with this type of brush on your paintings, it's going to just add the finishing touches to the painting and, and you'll be really impressed with the results. So I've gotten the first bit of the stems on my tomato in there. Now again I'm going to pick up that paint with my needlepoint brush and we're going to do, you're going to see how those fine lines look incredible. And that's it. Perfect. Look how good that looks. That looks great. So, we are now going to also, let's do some more fine. Now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, purple to that green. And some more red. So I'm going to have red and purple added to that green mixture. And now we're going to go in and do our details on the uh, label of the bo uh, bottle, our wine bottle. Nothing crazy. Again, a couple little flicks of paint is going to really look great. Just a couple like that. And then we have some writing on the bottle. Nothing I can really discern. So I will just pretend I know what I'm doing. And scribble a little couple speckles of paint. And there you have it. Then I maybe take a little bit of water on a damp with a damp brush and take my needlepoint brush. And then just soften out a couple of those spots. doesn't have to be... Let's, let's kind of soften a few spots up like that. And I think that looks good. And I go back in again and like that. Maybe a touch of red. Over here there looks to be a little bit of a red emblem. Like that. And what I also noticed too is I think we can also, since we have a lot of red and high intensity red here with uh, the, the tomato, we're going to maybe just add a little bit of red over here and there. We know we would probably see some red over here because of the reflections of the bottle and the tomato. so. That's another place we could add a little bit of red, like that. And up here we can do a little bit too, as well as up here. Why not just add a little bit of that red? It kind of balances the painting out and that's what we're looking for. Balance and harmony in our paintings. If you just add that little touch of red, just a little bit of that paint here and there, it is going to look better. It's going to actually, um, and a little bit in our tomato too as well. I mean our lemon. We add a little bit of that red to the lemon here, like that. And then I blot up a little bit with my tissue just to here and blend in a little bit of red over here too so you can kind of see I'm always mentioning that to try to use maybe just a little touch of a color that you might have in your painting in different areas of the painting so that it kind of all harmonizes together and looks kind of really good
sometimes just having one color in one spot on your painting and not having any of it anywhere else tends to maybe look a little it distracts a little bit maybe um, but you're, you're the artist you're gonna maybe experiment with this idea that I have about this but I think it you'll find that I it's it's true now we're gonna go with our titanium white which is our final touch-ups here and highlights we take a little bit of orange paint like this a little bit of yellow and orange to make up like a yellow ochre with a little bit of brown and a little bit of yellow let's get more yellow in that we're gonna make this a yellow ochre that's about yellow ochre and then we put that into the top of the tube of paint with our brush and we're just gonna put a few highlights one here like that that might be a little bit dark I mean a little bit uh, yeah too too um, too much yellow ochre in there so you can always lift up a little bit lift up there not enough white paint too much yellow ochre and then you just lighten it up a little bit and that looks better and then we have this here that's the highlight there that looks fine we wanted to put a highlight here on the cappuccino cup the handle we sort of painted over that before so we wanted to put that highlight there you can kind of see how that highlight looks and it goes around this way a little bit too like that and then there's more shadow there and then also too we wanted to do a little bit there because it wasn't it was a little we made this a shadow area under here a little too dark with a little and then then we do that add a little light to that and I think that looks pretty good maybe this shadow over here could be a little better like this I think that looks better Okay. Um, anything else I thought I saw that might need I think this is good I wouldn't go too much more and I always mention that um, if you are going to do your final touch ups on your paintings please I, I always myself I really um, try to really do my touch ups very sparing, sparingly I can actually add a little bit of white paint here to sharpen up a couple lines or two But I think that that is really that's fine so this is a really fun composition to do I'm glad you're gonna do this and try it and do it a couple times two or three times and um, we're gonna see you on the next video and thanks everybody for stopping by and I always mention um, throughout my video if you really like my videos and you're really learning a lot and enjoying uh, my videos please subscribe it's just the button down there on the right hand side below the screen all that does is really just it alerts you every time you open up YouTube it shows you that I have a new video and this way you can check it out if you like it and work along with us here so my you know click when you click on the subscribe button it really just lets you know that we've created a new video here and that's really it there's no emails or text messages you're gonna get or phone calls on your on your phone or anything like that it's just YouTube's way of saying you like my channel here on YouTube and you want to kind of see my videos you want to see my videos in your when you open up YouTube so that you're alerted that I've made a new video and that's all it is this way you can keep track and keep a track of what we're doing here and you'll be uh, getting more information on watercolor painting and uh, I'm glad you're he again here following along and we'll see you on the next video everyone thanks so much again for painting along with me and have a wonderful day evening morning and we'll see you soon bye bye